All right, so I'm going to give you this other cr kind of, cr oh god, I'm going to give you this other kind of product, which is the cross product between vectors. This one is also not multiplication. Okay, so this one is important to know. This is not multiplication, and also need to be warned this operation is not commutative. You guys know what commutative means? No, it's right. Anybody? It doesn't work both ways. Yeah, so commutative means the order in which you do an operation doesn't matter, right? All of the operations that you guys have thus far used in mathematics are probably commutative except one. What is the one exception that you guys all know that's not commutative? Oh. Subtraction and division. Okay, fine. Subtraction and division aren't commutative, but they're also not operations because they're just inverse operations. I don't care. Skip those. Okay, valid point. Fine. Concession made. What is the interesting operation that you know that's not commutative? How about function? Oh, the function within another function? Yeah, function oh. composition is not commutative. You guys recognize? You remember that one? No. Yep. That would be this one? F of G, yeah. oh, F of G right? Oh, yeah. Is not necessarily the same thing as G of F. Yeah, not commutative. You guys cool with this? Yep. The everyday example in your life is that order matters, right? Like when you go to put the car in the garage, it's important that you open the door and then drive the car in. Because if you drive the car in and then open the door, there's a different set of outcomes. But you never have to open the door again. You will never have to open the door again, that's true. You also will probably be spending the next several days doing insurance paperwork. Because I'm not sure whether your auto insurance or your renter's insurance would cover the resulting catastrophe. I would recommend that you get those two insurances from the same company so you don't have to find out. Just thought. Okay, so this operation is not commutative, even though it looks like regular multiplication. Cool? Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do this. So we're going to start with our two vectors, A and B. And Kenna, what are you going to ask right now? Are those points? Are those points or vectors, right? So I'm going to say that I'm showing you how to calculate A cross B. Please do say that. A cross B. Yep, so when you're saying this, this is A cross B. How do you say the other one? Dot B. A dot, a dot B. B, right? Neither of these is A times B, because A times B doesn't make any sense here. Okay. Cool? All right. So to cross these, you do this. You make yourself a box. Have you guys done? Matrices before? Some of, maybe? Some. Okay. So I'm going to make this symbolic box. And into this symbolic box, I'm putting IJK across the first row with their vector hats on. Then I'm putting A1, A2, A3 through the second row. And I'm going to put B1, B2, B3. And this box is not actually a matrix. 
this box is the absolute value of a matrix, which is a determinant thing. Don't sweat this. This is the only thing you have to know about matrices in this class. Okay. So when you have a box like this, you do the following. So the first thing you do is you write down I. And then you put some parentheses in front of it. And then the next thing you do is you write minus and parentheses and a J and plus and parentheses and a K. You guys all good with this? So these are the I, J, and K out of that top row. And the crucial thing here is that there's a minus right here. Don't screw that up. Cool? Because magic. Like, literally, this is just magic right now. It's explained in the very odd row, but it's like two chapters in, so. Yeah. So don't sweat this thing. This is just a technique. Okay? All I'm doing is showing you how to get this number. Well, not a number, but this result. The fact that this is a determinant and that this kind of plays this way is a really deep thing. It takes a while to get there. I don't have. Well, okay. Two things. One is more advanced than the scope of the class. And two, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to this formula anyway. So I'm just going to give you this formula, and you guys can just use it. I'll give you the geometric definition, too, and you can just trust me that they're the same. The geometric definition makes more sense. Cool? OK. So in the first box here, this first set of parentheses on the I, you cover up the row and the column that contain i, and then make this little cross calculation. So I've got these cut, covered up, so I'm going to do this minus that. <coughs> so I'm going to do a2, b3, minus a3, b2, a2, b3, minus b2, a3. That's cool. OK. The next one, the middle box, you're going to cover up again the row and the column that the J are in. And then you're going to do that same cross thing. So you're going to get A1, B3 minus what? B1, A3. B1, A3. Um, quick question. Will we be spared from triple cross products? Triple cross products. Vector A. Cross they stopped vector making B. a ton of sense, thankfully. Yeah. There, yeah. When we get to the geometric observation, we'll make a nut, or when we get to the geometric case, we'll get a nice, easy observation about cross products of three vectors. So, how about this thing? What goes in the case slot? A1, A1 B2. Minus B1, A2. Okay, cool. So I need you guys to put this stuff into your brains. Cool. This whole thing has to go in your brain. You have to have to know how to compute cross product. Because I kid you not, you will have to compute a cross product for probably a quarter of the problems in this course. Um, so this turns into a number? Ah, good. Excellent question. What is the category of your answer? It's a, it should be a vector, right? Yeah, it is I and J. You guys see that? Yeah, I, just so, sure. I didn't know if those. This junk here is a. I answer? This crap? A2, B3 minus B2, A3. What kind of object is that? That is a number, but it's multiplied by the I vector. Good. That is a number multiplied by the I vector. So this part here is a number zero zero vector. Yeah, it's but, yeah, the multiplication right? of a vector. And then this junk is another vector. Right? Vector. Is some more scalar, and that's a vector. So this whole deal, right, is a vector. This whole deal is, is a vector. vector. And you are whatting those three vectors together? 
What kind of adding? Adding, subtracting, then adding again. Yeah, your vector adding, right? Yeah, addition. Vector okay, addition. see that? So the category of this guy is a vector, right? Now, what if you did this cross products here with a uh, zero vector? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, cool. Let's try that. That should be a good first example. Yeah, you should get zero vector. Okay, there are like three obvious examples to try, right? The first one is to take the zero vector and cross it with, I don't know, the vector a that we just played with, right? Okay, so you do i, j, k, zero, zero, zero. What goes in my third row? A1, a2, a3. Good. A1, a2, a3. And so you get, let's see, some stuff on an I minus some stuff on a J plus some stuff on a K, right? Um, so the stuff on the I is 0 times A3 minus okay. 0 times A2. So I got 0 A3 minus 0 A2. Good. Here I got 0 A3. 0 minus 0 again, yep. and in this guy, 0, zero minus zero. 0. 0 minus 0. Okay, so I got the 0 vector. Mm. Yep. You guys all see that? Mm. Yep. Okay, so whatever the heck the cross product does, when you do it with 0, you get 0. What if I did it the other way? So what if I did A crossed with 0 instead of 0 crossed with A? You get A30 minus A20 instead. You'll still get zero vector. the zero vector. Yeah. In that case, it is that one case. <laughs> yeah, so the way I would say that is, in this case, it commutes. Does that make sense? Not it's commutative, but in this one case, right, it commutes. What's that? So what's i, j, k, and what are they going to stand for? So that i, j, k are those standard basis vectors. So this i is 1, 0, 0. And this one, 0, 1, 0. So they're always going to be yep. exact. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm never going to use i, j, and k for anything other than these three standard basis vectors. Sorry. Thank you for asking that, Kennedy. It's a good point. So when we just did that cross product with zero vector, um, why do we end up with zero vector instead of just zero value? Excellent. So. I end up with a zero vector instead of a zero value because the i component here is zero, right? So when I take the zero scalar times the vector i, that's doing scalar multiplication, right? Mm. So the result of that is the zero vector. And I'm adding that to the zero vector, and I'm adding that to the zero vector. And so I'm in vector land. I can't move. You guys all see that? It's all forms of vector scalar multiplication, which ends with a vector. Yeah, so this is a scalar multiple of a vector added to a scalar multiple of a vector added to a scalar multiple of a vector, and so it's vectors all the way down. What's up, Seth? So when you add the top to the bottom diagonally, the other top bottom diagonally, and the left of the road, um, how do you determine which one you need? Is it just the top right, the, the bottom left? Minus the top left of the bottom. Yeah, it's diagonal minus anti-diagonal. Every time you're making one of those little boxes, it's always diagonal minus anti-diagonal. But is there, there is eventually a reason? Yeah, there is eventually a reason. But right now, I'm just going to have to have you just trust me on that. Um, we should also do some other examples, because I still don't know what this means or does. So. What are other good examples that are going to be pretty easy? No, let's not do the 111. That's too complicated for us right now. Oh. Let's do an easier one. Let's calculate i crossed with j. Okay. Okay, actually, in fact, I'm going to pause this. So.